Hey, you all. Thanks for taking some time today to listen in. Um, hey, our church has been in our phase two of reemergence, which we have been for a couple of weeks. Um, we have been meeting outdoors um, behind the church building on 354 Kettletown Road. And I, I can't even begin to tell you how good it has been to just be around God's kids and worship together after like three months of not being able to do that. Um, the hardest part, of course, has been to keep the social distancing, uh, but that's doable simply because like we've, we've been together. And so, you know, that's we've been um, doing the best at that as possible. Um, this Sunday, we're going to have a special treat. Uh, we have inside bathrooms. That's right. Can I get an amen? I know some of you are saying hallelujah right now and all. Yeah, if you still want to use the port of John's, I mean, we have them too. So, you know, if you really miss those things, they're there. Um, but we just have these nice new ones inside. Look, you know, God has been doing such a great, sweet work uh, among us um, as we've been meeting outside. And praise the Lord. I mean, absolutely beautiful weather he's graciously given us it's supposed to be another one of those gorgeous days on sunday like um low 70s and all that so bring your lawn chair bring a blanket bring sunscreen right pretend like it's a beach day um you're going to be in the sun for an hour or if, if there's shade you know if this if it's going to be cloudy that's awesome too um but you know you can even bring a beach beach umbrella if you like i mean we have some you know so, some people have those ones with the chairs where it kind of goes over the top of them which i, I like those things um but if you have an umbrella you know, bring a beach umbrella, go up to the top of the hill a little bit and and um, and put it up. Our backyard there at the church has proved to be a lot larger than it initially seemed. So there's plenty of room. And, you know, um, you guys who filled out the survey, um, thanks for doing that. I mean, you still can if you do it like now. Um, but those things are really helpful for us in navigating to into our next phase, which is moving indoors. So on Sunday, I'm going to have more um, announcement on like what that's going to look like and when it's going to be happening. Of course, some of these things are fluid. That's why we've been holding off on exactly when we're moving in and all of that. Um, but even moving in, that's going to be a phased movement as, as well until we're done with this pandemic. So like I said, Sunday, we're going to be talking about that a little bit more, well, a lot more. Um, what I would like to share with you today is just something short, a, sh a short reading, um, something to meditate on to, and to really be praying about. It's from John 17. It's, it's part of the prayer that Jesus prayed for us, or for us as in, in our age, in our time. It's in John 17. It was the night before his crucifixion. And so he left uh, this prayer. Well, he prayed for his disciples and he left that prayer for the disciples. And then he turns and he prays, looks past the disciples to those who would hear and he leaves a prayer for them so he leaves a prayer for us and he tells us his heart and his work in our day and this is what he said he said I, I don't pray for those alone but I also pray for those who will believe in me through their word so he's talking about his disciples and those who would believe in him through their word that's us okay so I, I pray for those who will believe in me through their word that they may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me and that the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them, you in me, that they may be perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved me as you have uh, and have, have loved them as you have loved me. So I think it's pretty obvious what Jesus is praying for. Right? I mean, he used one. I don't even know how many times in that. And, and he said that the world may know that you have sent me. And he, and he said that twice. So he's praying for oneness in the body of Christ among the, among the disciples, those who are followers of him. He's praying for oneness. And I know we can look at the fractions in the body of Christ and all of that. Um, but different churches don't necessarily mean divisions. There, there's, there's different styles of worship. There's different styles of learning. I mean, we have that. Now, there are divisions, too, and uh, divisions over non-necessary things and disagreements over particular um, methodologies and, and whatever. And, and I, don't, I don't even go there. But what I want to point out is how this applies to us, right? So I want to point out how this is Jesus' prayer for us, for, for us, 
Are we personally like keeping unity? Are we striving for peace among us? Are we making sure that as much as it depends on us, that there is peace and that we're actually ones that bring peace? Right? Blessed are the peacemakers. They'll be called sons of God or children of God. Um, it's easy in our fractured world to just voice opinions and just question everything, right? Our, our culture almost demands that we do that, right? Our, our culture demands like that we take sides and we see things one way or the other, but to like walk in balance, it seems to be like discouraged greatly nowadays to listen to one another, you know, discouraged. But anyway, we as a church right now are in a phased reemergence. Um, we're coming out of lockdown and for some, Look, I get it. It's moving way too fast. For others, again, I get it. It's moving way too slow. And there's always going to be something where we will not fully agree upon. And that's the way of things. And you know what? It should be that way. I, I, I don't expect it to be any different than a, God didn't create us or it, it, God didn't like once we become followers of him, take out the giant cookie cutter and start boom, stamping. And this is what every single person looks like. That's it's not the way it is. He designed us as unique individuals. We see things in different ways, but differences don't mean division, nor should they ever result in that. In our reemergence, look, some aren't going to like the protocols that we're implementing. Full out, get it. But even when I don't like a protocol or whatever it might be, I have an opinion on this or that, just ask why. Ask why is it done? I mean, and, and if it's stupid, look, it's going to get changed. But if there's a reason, look, it's only for a time. And we as a church, as, as individuals in the, in the church, like we have a responsibility I mean, we have a mission, right? I mean, we are part of the impact that Jesus wants to do in this world. In particular, we're part of the impact that he's doing in our region. Look, it's not going to be possible if we don't keep unity. He's called us to great things, great things that are only possible if we have and we give grace to one another. And also when we die to self at other times to think of another first. Look, we know this. Hey, this isn't something new. The greatest thing that ever happened to this planet is when Jesus died to self and went to the cross and won our salvation. Don't get surprised if he's going to ask you to follow in his footsteps and die to self too and not do something that you want to do. It's part of just following him. Hey, so I love you guys. I'll see you Sunday outdoors. Pray that the weather continues to be great like that and um, enjoy. God bless you all.